Among the many species that once walked the Earth, Neanderthals are perhaps the most fascinating. Their similarities and close relationship with us even lead some to call them our sister species, and to this day, their DNA still exists within most of us. Though the exact dates are unclear, this group of archaic humans is believed to have resided in parts of Europe between 400,000 and 40,000 years ago. This period largely falls within the Pleistocene epoch, when the Earth was generally colder than it is today, and massive megafauna roamed everywhere. Survival was far from easy. Therefore, to survive and thrive in such harsh conditions, Neanderthals evolved physiological characteristics that were truly astounding among all human species. If they were alive today, some might even consider them superhuman in certain aspects. After reading about the incredible Neanderthals, you're probably just as fascinated as we are. If you loved this deep dive into our ancient sister species, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel for more amazing historical content, and leave a comment below telling us what moment in prehistory you'd love to see covered next. The Neanderthal, our superhuman sibling. Outwardly, their anatomical differences from us wouldn't be too obvious. Perhaps the most noticeable difference would be their height. Samples we've studied show that on average, Neanderthals were considerably shorter than modern humans, typically 14 centimeters shorter than post-World War II populations. The famous Neanderthal specimen, known as Forbes Quarry 1, was about 1.78 meters tall. However, all things considered, this height isn't really short. Yet when comparing Neanderthals to European populations from 20,000 years ago, we find that Neanderthals were actually as tall or even slightly taller, so it's hard to say definitively how tall they originally grew. Interestingly, despite being shorter than modern humans, Neanderthals were much heavier. Males averaged up to 83 kilograms and females typically around 60 kilograms, making them 20% heavier than the average modern Homo sapiens. The reason for this apparent contradiction is that Neanderthals had extremely robust skeletons, much more compact than ours. Nearly every bone was thicker and heavier, sometimes twice as dense. Their shoulders, femurs, rib cages, arms, and kneecaps were all exceptionally sturdy. All these signs indicate that they were incredibly strong and muscular in life, likely an adaptation to their close quarters hunting strategy. They would use large spears to hunt medium and large prey, including various rhinos, horses, elephants, and of course, mammoths, which were similar in size to African savanna elephants, covered in thick fur and incredibly difficult to catch. This extensive and likely lifelong use of large spears is also why some researchers believe many Neanderthal specimens exhibit Popeye-like arms, enabling them to wield weapons with fierce power. The unique morphology of their arms and their overall muscular build might also be a sign of extremely high hormone levels. At least one study suggests that researchers believe Neanderthals were inherently full of hormones, which increased their muscle mass and gave them the ability to perform incredible feats of strength, such as carrying 27 kilograms of meat for 48 kilometers, a distance equivalent to walking around a football field 138 times. Furthermore, thanks to their wider chests, shoulders, and triceps, scientists speculate that if Neanderthals were still around, they would be excellent wrestlers and weightlifters. Males might be able to bench press 270 kilograms and females 160 kilograms. Their short, robust bones also played a significant role in this display of strength, but their powerful physique gave them more than just strength, it also gave them amazing endurance, which complemented their brutal and difficult lifestyle. Indeed, systematic analysis of discovered skeletons reveals that 79% to 94% of them show signs of having suffered severe trauma that fully healed including blunt force injuries, fractures, and even amputations. One particularly gruesome case is an elderly Neanderthal who lost his right arm in his youth, was blinded in his left eye due to severe facial injuries, and suffered severe ear damage, with his ear canals blocked by new bone growth from repeated injuries, leading to deafness in both ears. The high degree of injury seen in Neanderthal specimens is attributed to a combination of factors, including their aggressive face-to-face -face hunting techniques interpersonal conflict, and encounters with animals. In fact, the latter seems to have been a common occurrence. According to one study, nearly 74% of Neanderthals show signs of surviving encounters with ferocious animals, with 21% having conflicts with large felines, 17% with wolves, and 36% with bears. Most remarkably, 
Scientists believe these animal conflicts were not initiated by Neanderthals. On the contrary, the animals were acting in self-defense when they encountered them. Truly hardcore. Even their skin seemed built for battle. Genes found in Neanderthals related to skin, nails, and hair theoretically helped them cope with injuries and resist cold. Another adaptive feature that seemed to benefit their arduous lifestyle was their larger joints, which allowed them to perform a wide range of motion that is extremely difficult, if not almost impossible, for modern humans. While Neanderthal hands weren't necessarily larger, they were also very different from ours. Their fingertips were wider, and their thumbs extended at a wider angle, which likely affected their grip on objects. For some, this might mean a reduction in fine motor skills, but they compensated for this by holding their weapons with powerful grips. So it's clear that Neanderthals looked like formidable individuals on the outside, and their internal bodily structures were also unique. Remarkable respiratory capacity and athleticism. One fairly obvious feature was their barrel-shaped chests, which housed larger rib cages and larger lungs. Studies have found that, on average, Neanderthals had 20% more lung capacity than modern humans, though this value varied. Some particularly prominent Neanderthals far exceeded this. For instance, a male named Kebera, whose lungs could likely hold 9 liters of air. This is 40% more than the average modern male lung capacity, and even more impressively, until recently, the largest recorded lung capacity among athletes was only 8.5 liters. Neanderthals' longer, wider noses further corroborate their large breathing capacity, helping them exchange air faster, 10% quicker than any modern male or female. Their need for this rapid air exchange and their unusually large lung capacity are thought to be adaptations to support their heavier bodies and help them survive in cold climates, as animals living in cold environments, including Neanderthals, typically evolve faster metabolic rates to compensate for body heat loss. Of course, this also correspondingly increased their energy demands. For Neanderthals, it's believed they required 450 to 670 calories per person per day. So if they were still alive, you can imagine food would have two completely different nutritional labels, one for modern humans and one for Neanderthals. The robust nature of their noses also seemed to directly aid in resisting cold as the larger space within the nasal cavity helped to warm and humidify the cold, dry air entering. Given the above, you might assume they were skilled long-distance runners, capable of exhausting their prey, much like modern humans. But on the contrary, Neanderthals were explosive animals. Their body structure was more suited for short, rapid bursts of energy. For example, their toes were quite long and wide, allowing them to maintain ground contact for longer generating greater force and faster starts. Not to mention, their leg bones were quite short, which is typically not seen in today's endurance athletes, who generally have longer legs to increase stride length. Even their Achilles tendons were long and narrow, making them poorly suited for storing the energy needed for long-distance running. This, again, is the opposite of endurance athletes, whose Achilles tendons are almost always short and thick. However, their lower limb characteristics are the clearest indicator that speed trumped endurance. The truly powerful evidence lies in something unseen by the naked eye, their muscle fibers. You might know, especially if you studied exercise physiology, that humans have different types of muscle fibers, each specialized in its ratio of strength to endurance. For instance, some people might have a higher proportion of fast twitch or slow twitch muscle fibers the former helps generate explosive energy, while the latter might help people perform more sustained activities like modern human endurance running. In Neanderthals, these fibers were also mixed, but they generally had a much higher concentration of fast twitch fibers than us. This was likely an adaptation to their hunting style, which required quick bursts of speed to approach prey. This also means that if, for some reason, Neanderthals came back, you definitely want to race them in a marathon, not a sprint, to give yourself the best chance of winning. Large Brains and Unique Sensory Adaptations Undoubtedly, all this strength and speed gave them numerous advantages, and quite interestingly, their brain capacity was also large. 
On average, male cranial volume tended to be 1640 cubic centimeters and females typically around 1460 cubic centimeters, which is about 30% larger than contemporary human brain capacity. Of course, brain size alone doesn't fully explain intelligence, but their enormous brain capacity is a very good indication that they were at least far more intelligent than initially believed. It's now generally accepted that Neanderthals were capable of performing a range of complex tasks, such as cooperative hunting, tool making, careful care of the sick, and of course, communication. However, despite their large brain capacity, we don't necessarily have to assume Neanderthals had superior mental capabilities to us, because their brains were indeed structurally different from ours. They had a more round bomb-like shape, which was for controlling their massive bodies, and larger areas of the brain were allocated to certain senses, such as smell and vision. Their temporal lobes were relatively large. In fact, some scientists believe their visual capabilities were precisely the reason for their massive brain size, because Neanderthals also had unusually large eyes, which required more brain power to process what they saw. Of course, no complete Neanderthal eyes have ever been found, but based on the size and shape of their eye sockets, their eyes were estimated to be about 15% larger than ours. This would allow them to see more clearly and closer up than us, while also giving them better night vision. These eyes, combined with their huge brain capacity and large noses, resulted in Neanderthals having remarkably large craniums and skulls, which likely led to them having robust, thick necks. After all, they needed to be able to support such a large head. Furthermore, compared to us, their heads were not only larger but also longer and more protruding, and their other facial features were also oversized, including their brow ridges and teeth. Initially, it was believed that their thick, wide brow ridges and sturdy teeth implied an incredibly strong bite force capable of crushing bones, chewing tough meat, and various abrasive materials. However, subsequent studies have shown that their bite force was not much different from ours, falling within the upper range of modern human bite force, about 70 newtons. It likely wouldn't cause catastrophic injuries, at least most of the time. But this also raises the question, if not for a powerful bite force, why would they have such large mouths and teeth? One interesting theory claims the answer is that their palates widened simply to accommodate the teeth themselves. Specifically, a group of researchers believes Neanderthals used their teeth to grasp and manipulate different objects, thus freeing up their hands for other tasks. And there's some evidence to support this because in addition to the teeth being structurally and inherently suited for gripping, Neanderthal front teeth exhibit wear marks that are inconsistent with eating or chewing. This phenomenon is only seen in Neanderthals, suggesting they frequently used their incisors to bite things. The robust nature of each tooth might also have been an important part of processing their diet. We know through isotopic analysis that their diet contained a large amount of meat, in fact so high that they are considered hypercarnivorous. In other words, 70% of their immense caloric needs came solely from meat. Speaking of which, if you are one of the many people with Neanderthal DNA, you might wonder what this means for you, given how peculiar and different Neanderthals were compared to us. For example, does it mean superhuman strength or a voracious appetite for meat? Simply put, almost every study on this question so far has yielded no major results. Most research suggests that Neanderthal DNA generally has only subtle effects on athletic ability and appearance. Although an increasing number of studies indicate that their DNA might have a greater impact on our internal systems than we once thought. That being said, many of these studies contradict each other. And overall, there is much disagreement on how significant their influence actually is.